Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Jake from todaysiphone.com and here's the big news this week. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about really quick is AT&T actually did something kind of cool. Uh, they announced that starting April 8th, which is today, Easter Sunday, uh, they will unlock any AT&T phone as long as it's not currently linked to a contract. So let's say you're on a two-year contract and uh, those two years is up, you can contact AT&T and they will unlock your phone and then you can use it on international GSM carriers or even T-Mobile here in the U.S. So very cool AT&T. Okay, moving on, we have a couple of interesting stories about the iPad. The first one has to do with Wi-Fi and it's actually a potential bug that's plaguing new iPad models. There have been reports that iPads have been randomly like losing connection to the internet or not even connecting at all. And uh, personally, it happened to me once I was browsing the web and all of a sudden my iPad just cut out. And this week, an Apple internal memo leaked and that just basically let us know that they are aware of the problem. Their policy is if they run diagnostics on the new iPad that's claiming to have these issues and it doesn't seem to be a software problem, then, uh, you know, they'll replace your iPad and you send your first iPad with all of the original accessories and stuff back to Apple for testing. Hopefully this is an isolated issue and that, you know, it doesn't affect that many devices. But if you are experiencing some Wi-Fi problems, definitely bring a new iPad to your local Apple store and have them check it out. Uh, you should know that this isn't applicable for the Wi-Fi Plus 4G model. This is the Wi-Fi model only. Now this news comes right on the heels of some problems with the new iPad charging and even overheating. Uh, but all in all, I'd say these issues, well, annoying and frustrating for the customers that are affected, aren't as widespread as it could be. You know, it's nothing like antenna gate on the iPhone 4, so um, it, it could be worse. And next, even though I don't think it'll ever, ever, ever come to market, let's talk really quickly about an iPad mini. John Gruber over at Daring Fireball says he was contacted by a bunch of sources that basically told him Apple has a smaller 7.5 inch iPad prototype built in their lab and they're testing it and you know it's in the final stages of prototype he doesn't however know if it will ever hit store shelves which is you know a pretty big question apparently this smaller ipad has a resolution of 1024 by 768 and it's literally just the new ipad just a little bit smaller but even if this story is true and one of these mini ipads does exist somewhere in apple's labs you should know that it's by no means a guarantee that we'll ever see this thing. Apple builds tons and tons of prototypes. So it, it doesn't surprise me that Apple's thinking about a smaller iPad just because there's so much hype about it and so many people are talking about it, but it would surprise me if it ever came to actually a consumer product. All right, next, in iPhone 5 news, according to a man who works in the recruitment department at Foxconn, which, if you don't know, is the uh, main manufacturer of Apple products in China, the iPhone 5 will be coming out in June, and Foxconn is looking for 18,000 new employees to help produce the thing. Now, this guy was interviewed on TV Tokyo's World Business Satellite, but honestly, this sounds a little bit fishy to me. I can't really see how someone in the recruitment department would know the classified secret Apple product roadmap, and, and let alone talk about it on TV. And plus, he doesn't even call it the iPhone 5. He calls it the fifth generation iPhone, when it would actually be the sixth generation iPhone. So there's a lot of stuff in this story that doesn't really add up. And as Cam points out, the October fall-ish launch of the iPhone 4S was incredibly successful. Uh, so it seems more likely that Apple's going to stick to that new a uh, release schedule for the iPhone, you know, sometime in the fall rather than going back to the summer. And finally, you guys may or may not know about J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter interactive website called Pottermore. And it's basically, you can run through all of the books and explore significant scenes and find things and learn spells and get sorted and all that stuff that people like me love. And even though the site is on private beta right now, you can still get to the Pottermore shop where they just started selling Harry Potter ebooks and Harry Potter audiobooks. And while they aren't in like the iTunes store or the iBook store, the formats that they're being sold in are compatible with iOS devices. So if you just throw them into iTunes, you can sync either the audiobooks or the ebooks right onto your iOS device. And that's very, very cool. It's a much more efficient method than what I did, which was renting all the audiobooks from the library in CD form and uploading each individual disc to my iTunes. If you're interested, you can get the iBooks compatible files for 8 to 10 bucks on the website, and if you get the whole uh, 7 book bundle, it's 10% off. Okay, well that's it for this week, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, before I go, I want to leave you with a question of the day, and that is, what do you think the likelihood of a smaller iPad actually is? Like, I know some of you out there would buy it, some of you out there wouldn't. I personally wouldn't buy it, but I also just don't think that Apple's going to do it. Would you be surprised if Apple released it? Uh, you can let me know in the comment section down below, or hit me up on Twitter at TIP underscore Jake. 
And please don't forget that the links to everything I talked about in this video are in the description down below, so go check those out if you're interested. And of course, for more news, views, reviews, definitely check out todaysiphone.com.